Hey everyone, in this video I'm going to be going through a turbofan thrust reverser example and by the end of the video you should be able to understand why when an airplane lands you'll hear the pilot spool up the engines right after touchdown. Before we start calculating any thrust we need to know what the variables mean so I've drawn this turbofan engine, simplified schematic, broken up into two streams. The first is the core stream and that's the air that's going through the core of the engine through the compressor, the combustion chamber and the turbine and it mixes with fuel and, and is ignited so we denote this as hot and the subscript uh, will be a capital A. H. The other stream is the bypass stream, and that's the air that goes around the core and does not mix with fuel and get ignited. And so this is the cold stream denoted by a subscript of capital C. Coming into the engine, we have these mass flow rates. The first one is the mass flow rate of the air going through the bypass, and the second is the mass flow rate of the air going through the core. And then on the outlet of the engine, we have the exit velocity of the bypass stream, the cold stream, and we also have the exit velocity of the core stream or the hot stream. This engine has a bypass ratio alpha of 6.6, .6, and this is defined as the mass mass flow rate of the air through the bypass divided by the mass flow rate of the air through the core. The last two variables over here are UA and M dot A. UA will remain the same for all the cases that I do later in this video, and it's the landing speed, and we're going to assume that it's 250 kilometers per hour or 69.4 meters per second. And the last variable is this M dot A, or the mass flow rate of the air, the total mass flow rate of the air coming into the engine, and which is going to be equal to the mass flow rate of the air of the uh, bypass plus the mass flow rate of the air of the core stream, and there's going to be two different values values for this based off of whether we're at full thrust or idle thrust. Full thrust is going to be 465.8 kilograms per second and the idle thrust is going to be 150 kilograms per second. I've loosely based these values off of the CFM 565C engines that are used on the Airbus A340. It's pretty much the bypass ratio and the full thrust uh, mass flow rate through the engine. I'm going to be going through three different cases to show you how the thrust changes for each of these different scenarios. Now I know there's multiple types of thrust reversers out there but this is just a simplified analysis of a two stream turbofan engine and what happens to the thrust if we divert or deflect one or both of these streams. First let's look at case one. For case one we have the incoming mass flow rates to the engine. For the cold that's the bypass and hot that's the core and in this case we're deflecting both of, both of these streams 90 degrees perpendicular to the x-axis. We're going to be solving for the thrust for all of these cases along the x-axis. So if we deflect a stream so that it, it no longer has a component in the x-axis and only in the y-axis it won't contribute anything to the thrust in the x-axis. For this case, we're operating at full thrust, which is why our M dot A, the mass flow rate of the air through the engine, is at our maximum, 465.8 kilograms per second. And since we're deflecting both of the streams perpendicular to the x-axis, that means our exit velocity for both the cold stream and the hot stream are both zero meters per second. The flight speed for this is still the UA 69.4 meters per second. Now, most turbofans don't actually deflect the core flow or the hot flow. They only deflect the bypass flow. So that's what we're doing in case two here. We're still operating at the full thrust, which is why M dot A is equal to 465.8 kilograms per second, but now we are only deflecting the bypass or cold flow 90 degrees and leaving the hot flow or core flow to be undisturbed through the engine. So we have the exit velocity of the cold flow is zero meters per second, but now I'm assuming that the exit velocity of the hot stream or core flow is 250 meters per second, still at a flight speed of 69.4 meters per second. Then the last case that we have, case three, is for the same configuration here where we only deflect the bypass flow and not the core flow, but now we're moving the the uh, mass flow rate down to idle thrust, so we have an M dot A of 150 kilograms per second, and here for the bypass, it's still deflected 90 degrees, so we have an exit velocity of zero meters per second, and since we pulled these levers back to idle, the exit velocity of the core flow here out of the engine is lower than this one, and it's at 162 meters per second, and still we're at the same landing speed of 69.4 meters per second. For all these cases, note that I drew my coordinate axis with the X pointed this way. The engine or plane is flying this way, which is why the air is going in this way. If the thrust ends up trying to accelerate the plane, it'll be positive, and if it tries to decelerate the plane, it'll be negative. You might have noticed that I've mentioned the mass flow rates of the core and the bypass, but we haven't actually given numbers to those, but that's because we can solve for it using the bypass ratio alpha and knowledge of the full or idle air mass flow rate through the engine. So alpha is equal to 6.6. .6. We're going to start with full. It's equal to 6.6, .6, which by definition is m dot ac over m dot ah. So if I just multiply both sides by m dot ah, I get this for m dot ac, and we know that the full mass flow rate is equal to the addition or combination of both the cold and the hot flows. And so if I plug that this in for m dot ac here, we get 6.6 .6 m dot ah plus m dot ah, which is just 7.6 m dot ah. And the m dot a full we said was 465.8 kilograms per second divided by 7.6, and we get m dot ah is 61.3 kilograms per second. And if I plug this m dot ah up into here, we can solve for the mass flow rate through the cold stream or the bypass stream as 404.5 kilograms per second. We 
can do the same thing for the idle thrust. It's the same up until here, where instead of m.a full, we're using m.a idle, and that's 150 kilograms per second is equal to 7.6 m.a h, and we solve for the uh, hot stream is 90.7 kilograms per second, and the cold stream is 130.3 kilograms per second. And of course, the last thing we're missing is the actual thrust equation that we're going to be using to calculate the thrust, and that's shown here. I have a blog post going through the derivation of a turbofan thrust equation, and I'll post a link to that in the video description. So we end up having that the thrust in the x direction is equal to the mass flow rate through the core times the difference of the uh, core exit velocity minus the flight velocity, and that's the thrust from the core. And the bypass thrust is the mass flow rate of the air through the bypass or cold stream times the difference between the exit velocity from the bypass minus the uh, flight velocity. And just two things if you're keeping track here, uh, we're assuming that the fuel to air ratio is negligible and that the exit pressures, the exit static pressures from both the core and the bypass are equal to the ambient pressures, but you don't need to worry about that for this analysis. Now that we've laid everything out, going through the cases should be relatively quick. So we're going through case one. This is both streams are deflected, which is why we have the exit velocities at zero for both of them, the flight velocity, and then the mass flow rates through the uh, bypass and the core that we just solved for. And again, the thrust equation repeated here. And if we put these values into here, we get the core thrust is negative 4254 newtons. And if we plug them into here, we get that the bypass thrust is negative 28072 newtons. And combining those, we get the total thrust is negative 32326 newtons. So from these results, it's clear that both the core and the bypass produce negative thrust that helps to slow down the aircraft. Now let's move on to case two, where only the bypass flow is deflected and the core stream is allowed to continue undisturbed through the engine. So the only thing that's changing in our variables is the exit velocity of the core stream at 250 meters per second. So that's going to change this value from a zero to a positive 250. So if we recompute the core thrust, we get positive 11071 newtons and the bypass thrust remains the same because we didn't change this or this or this from the previous case. So if we add these two together, we still get a negative. So we get negative 17001 newtons and that's a total thrust, a total reverse thrust of 17 kilonewtons opposing the motion of the aircraft. But this case is particularly interesting because since we didn't deflect the core, it's still producing positive thrust, which is trying to accelerate the plane, but the bypass thrust of negative 28072 newtons dwarfs that core's positive thrust, producing the total reverse thrust. And finally, we have case three, where the only thing that's changed is that we've reduced the thrust from full down to idle, so we have three changes. We have the exit velocity from the core has decreased down to 162 meters per second, and the mass flow rate through the engine has changed as well, based off of that reduced total air mass mass flow rate through the engine. And so we can plug these new values again into the same thrust equation. Solving for the core, we get positive 1824 newtons. Solving for the bypass, we get negative 9043 newtons. And when we add those together, we get negative 7219 newtons. So here again, as with case two, we have a positive contribution to the thrust from the core, which means this, the core, is trying to accelerate the aircraft. But the bypass thrust ends up being negative and it dwarfs the core's positive thrust so that in the end, we get a total negative negative thrust that tries to slow the plane down. And so here's the final comparison between the three cases where for case one, we had the highest reverse thrust, case two was the next highest, and case three was the least amount of reverse thrust. These two cases, case two and three, are the, are the interesting ones to compare because they both have the deflected flow, but one of them is using full thrust, which has the maximum mass flow rate through the engine, and the second one is using idle thrust, which has the least amount of mass flow rate through the engine. And in both cases here, the thrust from the bypass was negative enough to offset at the positive thrust from the core. And so finally, you can see why when a pilot lands and engages the thrust reversers, they'll spool it up to get the maximum mass flow rate through these engines so that they can get the maximum reverse thrust uh, to slow the aircraft down. Again, this was a simplified analysis, but as a final note, you might be saying, well, the bypass thrust that gets diverted doesn't always go perpendicular. Sometimes it'll be uh, coming forward or something like this. And you'll see that if you take that into account into the thrust equation, you'll end up getting a cosine theta term uh, in the thrust equation depending on what the angle is that the flow is diverted. Hope the video was interesting and thanks for watching.